What's up guys? I am here in Flagstaff, Arizona in the Coco Nino National Forest. Back here again. Last video, as you guys know, I was in Ocean Beach, San Diego, where I stayed there for like a month. And I went up to LA to see my friend Logan Cahoon and her friend Jenna. She had a layover, so she was just there for the day. I had to get out of there. It was crazy packed. Right after LA, I ended up going back to Flagstaff. I did an eight hour drive and ended up getting into Flagstaff at like five in the morning. I know I told myself that I was going to be disciplined and not really travel much and save money. I ended up doing some little adventuring. I went to a music festival called Building Man in uh, Green River, Utah. Guys, this video is going to be about my very first hitchhiker and also my trip to this music festival up in Utah. And I went to Salt Lake City to see my cousin Tommy, my first hitchhiker. What ended up happening was I was doing my normal, normal where I wake up at six or seven and I go walk out into the woods and quiet my mind, I meditate. As I was walking out in the woods, this guy says, hey, sir. So I turn around and it's this blonde, blonde white guy who has a hunting knife in one hand and a large uh, sausage pepperoni in the other. So he's like slicing up pepperonis. He ends up asking me, hey man, where's the, where's the crap around here? And I told him, hey man, there's no crapper out here. You gotta go back into town to take a shit. Well, eventually, you know, we're talking. I ended up driving him into town. He needed some groceries because he was like stuck out in the woods. And I find out that he's, you know, hitchhiking and living out in the woods. Well, he ends up finding I'm going to Building Man in Green River, Utah, and he needs a ride because he's going up to, he, needs to, he needed to get to Idaho. I was very hesitant about giving him that ride. The reason I was iffy was first, I didn't know him. Second, he was like a middle-aged guy living out in the woods. Uh, third, he approached me with a knife originally, so I knew he was, I knew he was packing. <laughs> uh, also, I knew after getting to know him, I found out he came, he told me that he was raised Indian, like grew up Indian, the Indian way. And so he had a really strong ideology and he was talked about talking, talked about communicating with spirits and stuff, which is fine, totally accepting of that. But uh, since I didn't know him, I was kind of, is this just a, crazy is he a little crazy out in the woods I, th I, th I wasn't sure if he was just kind of like a uh, a lunatic I don't know so, <laughs> but it, but I was painting this picture of him based off of the unknown and based off of fear you know this would be a perfect opportunity for someone who's desperate has no money living out in the woods to hey here's a loner in a cool little van I'll just poke him with my knife and he would have a nice little home and food for a while you know so <laughs> So that, that was my delusional perception of this guy. But I didn't like that I was basing my perspective on him through fear. I was I was painting a picture of him through through my own fear and I did not like that. So I decided to give him a chance. I took him out to I took him out to launch. We went and did laundry together. So I was trying to I was trying to see if he ever broke character, see if he was crazy. I was testing him out. I ended up really liking him. Uh, I ended up just accepting his beliefs and accepting him and he ended up being, you know, an awesome guy. So I was like, Kevin, his name's Kevin. I was like, Kevin, come along with me to Green River, Utah, pal. <laughs> so I ended, up, I ended up taking him along, even though he talked nonstop. Oh, put your shoe, put your shoe. <laughs> This guy was full of knowledge, history, knowledge, theology, all sorts of stuff. So he could just keep jabbering on. Five years of Juilliard for that. Appreciate it. And you know me, I'm a, I've been traveling thousands of miles alone. And I just, when I drive, I, I like, I love these long drives, but I like it because it's peace and quiet, nice reflection time. I ran into some encounters where if I didn't have them, I'd be screwed. For example, I, I used my GPS on my phone and I didn't have data out in Utah. We missed a turn. <laughs> well, I missed an exit because he was just talking nonstop and he distracted me, Kevin. <laughs> just kidding, it's cool, it's my own fault. I missed the exit and it's my, my phone starts rerouting and when I don't have data, I can't reroute. So I'm like, damn it, I'm lost. I'm lost out here in the desert. But luckily, Kevin, Kevin's like, I, I got an atlas, Weston. <laughs> And he's been around this area, so he knew exactly where we were. He's like, oh, the exit's a few miles back. And he pulled out his atlas. So thanks, Kevin. Now I know to bring an atlas. Kevin was awesome. I'm so glad I brought him. We shared so many laughs. <laughs> and it was so nice, actually, to to have someone to, to come along. Come along with me on my journey. It was a good learning experience for me, too. I always try to be welcoming of people because I'm afraid of you know how, how much time I am alone out here. If I do spend too much time alone, I have, I have a fear 
that just say ever ever do make friends or a girlfriend or whatever I'll just be very intolerant and be like Ugh, get out of my life <laughs> but I don't want to be like that I want to be accepting alone I'm a lone wolf come on join my pack who knows you know we ended up getting to Green River we I found some free camping actually right near where the festival was so that worked out perfect I went down this windy road dropped them off into some <laughs> some desert <laughs> near the river and I went to building uh, so, Building Man, I got invited by Julie on YouTube. Thanks for inviting me and opening this amazing, beautiful door to all the freaking fun I had, even though we didn't get to really hang out that much. <laughs> so, Building Man is a self sustaining, I guess it was 100% powered by solar energy, I guess. There were workshops, live music, DJs, some dancing people. If I had to describe it, uh, I would compare a lot of my experience to the scene from Zion in Matrix Reloaded <laughs> with drums and people people running around, life, you know, that's how I would describe it. Uh, so I get there, it's great, and I was, I was really excited to be social, be around a bunch of people, I love dancing. I I was excited to basically test out my social skills. I don't know if I told you guys, but I used to have social anxiety with people I didn't know. Uh, back in high school, I just could not uh, could not talk to people. I like I would sit alone, basically in ninth grade, and not talk to people. I think it was because I wanted to protect my own identity of myself. Because I was a happy, confident guy inside, but to protect that identity, I would not be vulnerable or open with the world. I'd be like. I'm protected, I'm awesome, I'm awesome. I guess it was some sort of self-protection of my own identity. But, you know, I've been working on myself, meditating, reading, uh, doing things outside of my comfort zone, pushing my boundaries, and realizing you can break your little fear, domesticated life if you want, right? So that's why I was excited about this building man thing, was, hey, I'm gonna have to be alone, vulnerable, walk up to people, hey, what's up, dance and challenge myself, bring it on. That's the kind of attitude you have to have. Instead of running away in a little comfortable bubble, you push through and pop that freaking bubble and dance like a mother ad man. I actually trained myself before I went out on my travels. And uh, how I trained myself was I lived in downtown Orlando, which is near all the bars, a big bar scene. And I would go out alone and totally sober. This was a big deal for me at the time because I would use alcohol. I used alcohol so much for social lubricants, a crutch to be social and to have fun. Also, you, you tend to use your friends as a sort of little social floaty devices. You depend on them and you feel comfortable with them. When you take out the alcohol and you take out your friends, you're left with no crutches. You're left on your own to, to sink or swim, right? That's, that's the feeling. And I, and I thought that was a really good self-development thing to do, is to go out there and uh, and let loose. So I would go out, walk out downtown. I usually go to a place with a dance floor, test my social skills. <laughs> it was it was really difficult, believe it or not. Uh, go out to the dance floor, and you know you feel all that fear coming over you, and it's it's uh, honestly kind of freaking ridiculous to me to to have that fear. Uh, I am I I, I st it started dawning on me how domesticated and afraid I really was because. Here we are, right, on this little planet. Billions of people, infinite, infinite space everywhere. And I can't even walk up and be social with people or uh, dance the night away because I, my mind is making up stories of why it's stupid, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it really dawned on me how, how that's no way to live. So I would go out there and bust loose and it was a very liberating thing to realize I can be up out here alone, find happiness and excitement, and meet people. Eventually, I would get de pretty decent at it. Go out alone, talk to people. I would have nights where I'm like, how did this happen? I was dancing with some beautiful, amazing girls, and then I remember I had one night where I was in a little buggy by myself that I paid this guy to drive me back to my apartment, and I was like just laughing and waving at people, and it was a, uh, I was like, I, I walked out of my door and made this shit happen. And that's what I feel like I'm doing with this man life. It's like, I'm walking out here, dancing, making making things appear in reality. Weird ass, weird ass stuff. But, so I'll first get there. First get there, right? And uh, what I know from doing these little this little training stuff in Orlando is, you don't think, don't think. Start talking, start walking up to people. When you think, you get all introverted and internal. You gotta be out in the open 
talking to people. So that's what I did. Right when I got there, I saw this bus that I recognized. It was a big purple bus. And I walked right up to it. It wasn't the bus I thought it was. And there was a uh, middle-aged couple out there, 40s, 50s, maybe 60s, I don't know. Uh, I ended up talking to them. They were so sweet. They're so nice. And thank you guys for being so welcoming and polite. Very comforting in a way. <laughs> but I ended up hanging out with them, getting to know them. And they gave me a couple drinks, right? And I ended up uh, meeting a group of these guys who we went up to went up to some hill. And we ended up going out to the dance floor and busting loose. It was crazy. Like I said, it was like a scene from Zion. Music pumping. Uh, and then by this by, at this point on the dance floor, I was sober. I was just dancing. And the thing with dancing is it can, it can make you feel intoxicated. It's like a natural intoxicant. That's why I love it so much. You just, you just move around. You get in the present moment and you let loose and you're just like giggly. And I, I tried to stay away from alcohol that night, at least for the beginning of the night. I just wanted to test, test myself. And the thing with alcohol, it is a social lubricant. It does make stuff flow so much easier. I was dancing, and when you're still going sober, it's, it is work. You gotta keep the energy and the mentality up. Uh, eventually, I sit down next to this bearded, dreaded guy, and he's rolling up a joint, and he has a bottle of whiskey, and he hands me the bottle of whiskey, and he's like, dude, drink some. And I was kind of proud of myself for how much I danced sober. So I was like, yeah, I'll have some whiskey. And I ended up drinking whiskey, getting a little intoxicated dancing like a fool and boy it was amazing uh the next next night i ended up hanging out with that couple again and those group of guys and we basically did the same thing danced like fools and it was a great experience because everyone was very welcoming and uh polite everyone was there just to have fun and love life which was really nice and a big change from orlando this was just like hey i love you i love you <laughs> let's dance Totally up my alley. Beautiful girls everywhere, hitting hitting each other pillows. They had to throw out pillows and everyone was hitting each other, just giggling, swinging from swings, uh, laughing nonstop, tons of whiskey. We, they danced till like four, five, six in the morning, I think till the sun came up. And I was dancing, got a little too into it and rolled my ankle. And I, I am known, I'm known to roll my ankle. I'm known to dance a little too hard. Uh, I'll just be getting into it and, oh my, holy crap. I just don't even know how my body's doing this stuff. I'll, I'll put my back down to the floor and somehow pop back up. I'll roll around. <laughs> you know, uh, it's intense. But eventually I rolled my ankle and stumbled off back to my van and went to bed. That was the last night. I woke up early, I, uh, I, wrote, I wrote the couple a farewell note on their van, thank you guys. I picked up Kevin, yeah, so I picked up Kevin in this little spot near the river, and I went up, I dropped him off actually at this Utah lake, where I said farewell, farewell friend, my travel companion. Went up to Salt Lake City, I saw my cousin Tommy, uh, thank you for spending some time with me, it was just short and sweet, and got some food, and I stayed the night there at a Flying J, uh, that next morning, I went back to Flagstaff. Now I'm here back in Flagstaff, doing my thing. Uh, and I've just been working on my graphic design. I've been hanging out with some locals here and there. But what was so cool about this whole experience in Utah was, first, was to get past your fears when it comes to people. Uh, I painted this terrible picture of Kevin, right? And Kevin ended up being a buddy. Uh, also, being in an environment where everyone's so welcoming and uh, just trying to have fun and loving life was amazing. And that makes it even easier to to feel amazing, right? Uh, I kind of want to do more music festivals. It was just a great experience I want to I want to be around. So far right now, I my goals are to save up money. I have a lot of plans. I, I do want to eventually upgrade Span. I want to have options even though I, I wasn't very disciplined this, this month I went to Utah spent shit tons of money <laughs> shit tons of money oh Weston yeah so right now my goals are just to be working on my graphic design which I really have been enjoying and doing doing fairly good each month my income's been increasing it's a really cool cool thing and I have some financial goals I want to I want to I want to uh, accomplish 
I want to thank you guys for watching my videos. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. I think one of my next videos I'm going to be making is a day in the life of, just so you can see my daily routine of what I do out here in Flagstaff. But thank you guys for watching. Peace out. Later. Anybody's home